911, what is the address of the emergency? Stop! What is happening? I don't know. There's blood okay, everywhere. How do you, what do you mean there's blood everywhere? What what happened? I'm, I'm, he's not breathing, okay? I don't know! I'm, I'm scared. I just want him in here. The girl you just heard is 24-year-old Taylor Gould. On October 13th, 2013, she, her boyfriend Rahul, and their friend Mark came to apartment 1601 to celebrate Rahul's birthday. However, nobody could have ever expected how this seemingly normal night would end. Oh my God, what happened? Somebody was murdered. I know. I mean, you have to have some explanation. Did you kill Mark? I don't think so. I don't know what happened to them. I mean, if I wanted to stab Mark, I would have remembered every detail of it. What happened? Okay. Did what you stab Mark or no? Why would I attack someone? Three friends, one dead, and the other two claim not to know what happened. However, one of them hides a disturbing secret. And unless the police can figure out what happened in apartment 1601, it will forever remain a mystery. Some people are going to do whatever they have to do in order to try to save themselves. One of them had to do it. To say that you don't know what happened when somebody gets killed violently is unbelievable. I know my brother. He didn't do this. One of them did it. Yeah. It is October 13th, 2013. At 2 in the morning, law enforcement gets a disturbing 911 call. When the first responders arrive at the scene, Taylor Gould greets them at the door and remains in the hall alongside the police. As they step into the apartment, they have no idea what awaits them inside. The first sight of the scene reveals a shocking mess. The police come into this efficiency apartment that's all bloody. I see a dead guy with a lot of blood on him. The blood is all over the apartment. A 23-year-old student, Mark Waugh, lies dead on the floor with multiple stab wounds. His best friend, 24-year-old Rahul Gupta, who is completely covered in blood, appears drunk. He keeps mumbling and walking in circles. When police officer Skiba approaches him, he is in shock when he hears what Gupta is saying. Gupta was laying right here. He kept rambling and talking in circles. I do remember him distinctly saying to me, I caught my buddy and my girl cheating. I killed my buddy. He claims he did it because he caught his girlfriend Taylor cheating on him with Mark. However, clearly under the influence of alcohol, it's hard to know if his confession is believable at the moment. He's immediately put in handcuffs alongside his girlfriend Taylor. At around 5 a.m., Taylor Gould and Rahul Gupta reached the police headquarters. There, they encountered Detective Paula Hamill, an experienced interrogator. They were both brought to headquarters as suspects. Both are under the influence of alcohol. They still can't remember the details of the last night. I'm really not sure what happened between when we got there and when the police got there. I that I don't remember what happened. However, the detective has a suspicion that the young couple knows more than they're telling right now. Since Rahul Gupta confessed, Detective Hamill still considers him the main suspect. However, little does she know what will unfold when she turns her attention to Taylor Gould. Honestly, I just wish I knew what happened. I'm kind of hoping you can... Um, will you be able to or not? Right. Yeah, I mean, I think that you'll be able to fill me in with what happened, actually. <laughs> okay. Because clearly something happened. Yeah. And I know that you're, you know, that you're remembering like something with video games, and then, you know, the next thing you know, Rahul is telling you to call the police or whatever. Mm -hmm. But there's a big gap of time in between uh -huh. there where something happened. Uh -huh. Okay. And I, I believe that you know what happened, or, and that's something that you're gonna that you need to tell me about, okay? Yeah, I mean, but the, we, were, we were drinking. I point. understand that you were drinking. And then, okay, okay, I understand that. Okay. But Mark is dead. What? Yes. Oh my God. Okay. Oh my God. What happened? So that's what we're trying to find well, out. How did, how did he die? I don't know. You don't? I don't know yet. Well, there's a lot of blood. He's okay. Right. Well, he's... You know, 
I'm sure that you like, would like to think he was okay, but you're a smart girl. So I'm sure that it was pretty clear at your apartment when he's not moving no. and there's all this blood. We were drinking. I don't remember. All I remember is Raul telling me to call 911. Right. Like, why would Rahul get so upset that he would do something to Mark? I don't think he would. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. Did you... Were you in bed with Mark at oh, all not. during the night? No. no. Did you have sex with Mark? Anything happened no. with Mark during the last no. night? That's, no. That would have made Raul angry? No. No. I mean, I obviously I'm going to talk to Raul and find out. Yeah. Like yeah. what happened, you know, or what he says. I mean, is he going to? What is he going to tell me? I don't, I don't know, but I know that didn't happen. When she is done with Taylor, Detective Hamill turns her attention back to the main suspect, Rahul Gupta. We're going to have to talk to Kay. Of course. So I'm just going to talk to her and try to figure out what else, you know, because it's not, it's not exactly what she told me, you know, I mean, she'd tell me that she did, well, like I talked to her already briefly, and she certainly wasn't indicating that there was any anything between her and Mark or anything she said it was Josh well I mean there it's totally possible that nothing was going on right between them but I know for a fact that I did not stab Mark okay. I mean so if I did that I would know it's actually least, saying you don't know what happened I don't know what happened between Tay and Mark to cause him to be on the side of the bed when I found him like that, mm -hmm. but I know for a fact that I did not do that. I mean, if I wanted to stab Mark, I would have remembered every detail of it. I would remember coming up to him, confronting him, and stabbing him. But I don't know what happened to him, but I know for a fact that I didn't do all of that. Right. I mean, I would understand if you did. I mean, I. I, I would understand too. I mean. I just, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't stab him. I didn't, I didn't attack him. I didn't confront him. How did you do You didn't get in a fight. He didn't try to hurt you, and you didn't get the knife back and protect yourself. It just didn't happen. Like I. I well, mean, you I, don't know that. You keep saying I don't know. I don't know. I, well, I don't know what happened between Tay and Mark, yeah. but I do know for a fact that I was doing my own thing, and then when I was alerted to the situation, I went to Mark. Okay. That's what I do know. Okay. I don't know what happened. Um, between Tay and Mark, except for the fact that she was definitely hesitating a little bit right. when I when I yelled at her to call the police mm -hmm. or paramedics or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's what I remember. Now, Gupta claims he definitely did not kill Mark. He remembers chilling on the couch, feeling buzzed and high when he suddenly heard Gould's disturbing screams. Startled, he glanced up and saw Waugh covered in blood. Acting quickly, he rushed to help, attempting to stop the bleeding. Although he doesn't exactly remember what happened, he feels suspicious about Taylor being hesitant when he yelled at her to call the police. I can't say what happened. See how hard for me to wrap my head around that? Sure. After several hours of interrogating Gupta, Detective Hamill still thinks Gupta is the main suspect. She believes Gupta's initial confession was truthful. While Paula is interrogating the suspects, other members of law enforcement are doing their best to figure out what happened last night at the crime scene. It was Gupta's birthday, and he went out with some of his closest friends, including his close friends Mark Waugh and Josh White, and his girlfriend Taylor. They went bar hooping, hitting three different spots in endless rounds of drinks. As the night went on, the atmosphere took a strange turn around midnight, particularly at Buffalo Billiards. Josh would later recount how Taylor got a bit too friendly with him. She has a sense to be a little flirtatious okay. to Ralph's friends. And I just asked her, like, straight up, like, what's the deal? Like, you know, you're you're a little flirtatious. And yeah. she said, I, could, I couldn't do that to Rahul. You know, I love him very much. It sounded like I was hitting on her. And so he took that very bad way. He was pretty pissed off. However, when Taylor is later asked what she remembers about this, she tells detectives a slightly different story. Josh was texting me and it was really weird and he was kind of hitting on me and, um... Josh was? Yes. Sensing the bad vibes, Josh went back to his place, 
while Gupta, Mark, and Taylor went to the apartment. In the security footage, they can be seen strolling through the lobby, heading for the elevator, just moments before the horrible tragedy. As they stroll to the apartment, they're visibly drunk and intoxicated. Despite the camera footage, the detectives can't tell if anyone looks frustrated or angry. All three of them appear to have good vibes. However, upon inspecting Mark's phone history that night, they discover a couple of strange messages he sent to his friend, apparently from the bathroom. My night is becoming historically awkward, and I'm about to gnaw my hand off so I can leave in the ambulance. Detectives are now completely sure there was some drama at the apartment. Since Gupta and Taylor shared the apartment, DNA and fingerprints won't be much help. However, there's other evidence in the play, and prosecutors believe it's what steers suspicion more toward Gupta. At just 5'5 five, five inches and weighing 125 pounds, Taylor Gould doesn't seem like they could be the murderer. Mark is considerably larger than her. It was fighting back. And she doesn't have a mark on her consistent with being fought back. She has no blood on her face, no blood in her hair. Could she have washed up? There are photographs that are taken within several minutes. Her hair is not wet, and she has her makeup on. They also doubt the blood on her. There was no blood on her face, not a single drop in her hair. Although there is a possibility she changed her clothes and cleaned herself up, they doubt it because photos of the scene were taken just moments after the 911 call came in. In photos, her hair is dry and she still has her makeup on. They insist she acted as any confused, innocent would. When asked about the blood on her hands, she says she got it by touching Gupta. However, Gupta's defense attorney, Jennifer Page, doesn't think Gupta is responsible for the crime. Page reveals that Gupta was intoxicated and confused, leading him to confess in order to shield Taylor Gould from facing murder charges. I think that he would definitely try to protect Taylor. I mean, when you heard what he said to that first police officer who came in, what did you make of that? Honestly, I didn't believe it. You didn't believe he said those words? Correct. When she first heard about Gupta's confession to the police officer, she didn't believe it at all. I believe that his initial statement was as truthful as he could have been. And then I think he spent the rest of the time trying to get away from that. Co-counsel Phil Armstrong reveals that as Gupta sobered up, he swiftly understood that taking the fall for Taylor Gould is a terrible idea. Consequently, he began talking with the detective, opting for honesty. Armstrong insists the evidence supports his client, beginning with the surveillance tape just before the murder. Mark can be seen laughing and getting along with Gupta. He believes that if anyone acted suspiciously that night, it was Taylor. Gupta's lawyers claim she dialed 911 only under Gupta's direction and provided minimal information to the operator. What is the address of the emergency? They point out that he's clearly in great despair, trying everything to save his friend's life. This doesn't match the profile of someone who stabbed his friend 11 times. Page and Armstrong assert that Gupta did everything in his power to save his friend's life. They claim the reason he was drenched in Mark's blood is because he gave him CPR. They also argue that most of the forensic evidence taken at the crime scene is useless due to the police's carelessness. They also suspect Taylor was behaving suspiciously last night, especially since she insisted she didn't deny killing Mark. Also, there's proof that she changed outfits twice before the first responders arrived. How did the blood get on the dress? I mean, maybe, maybe I was by Mark before blah, blah, blah. I mean, I, I have no idea. You had the wherewithal to change your clothes, yet you can't remember how you got the blood on you. I'm telling you the truth. To add to his defense, Gupta's lawyers think photos taken at the police station indicate that Taylor might be the one responsible. There are two strange marks on Taylor's hand, located close to her little finger. As she possibly stabbed Mark with the knife, even with just a bit of force, there's a chance her hand might have slipped and hit the bottom of the handle. They also claim that Gould possessed enough strength to fatally stab Waugh, even though she is smaller in size. When we asked the medical examiner who could do this, she said, quote, any healthy adult. As the investigation unfolds, authorities suspect that Mark Waugh has fought the assailant, while legal representatives argue that Taylor Gould also appears to have engaged in a struggle. Gould's bloody and broken fingernails indicate a fierce resistance. Remarkably, one of her contact lenses adheres to the back of Waugh's jeans, suggesting proximity during the struggle. 
Additionally, a strand of long blonde hair, strikingly similar to Gould's, is discovered on the murder weapon. But it's not just on the knife. Long strands of blonde hair cling to a bloodstain on the wall and are even found in Mark Waugh's hand. The hair isn't tested, but everyone assumes it's Taylor Gould's. Yet, prosecutors argue that it's irrelevant because she lives there. Furthermore, they believe Gupta would not take the blame for Taylor because their relationship was in trouble lately. To back this up, they find text messages suggesting their recent arguments. Messages like, Our sex life may not be salvageable, and You shouldn't have to make yourself have sex with me, were found on their phones. Although they were fighting, it's clear the couple also cared for each other. There were messages like, I love you, and I wouldn't trade my time with you for anything. Even though their relationship had problems, those messages showed the investigators there their love wasn't fake. After a thorough investigation, the prosecutors are now convinced Taylor Gould is innocent. However, to get more details into the details of the last night, Detective Paula Hamill decides on a strange tactic. She lets both suspects talk to each other. That was probably the second time in 10 years that I'd done it. Maybe one of them would say something that would make us go, oh, oh did you hear that? What happened? Okay. Yeah. Oh. What happened? Okay. I don't know. What happened to Mark? I don't know, but I told them, like I said, I don't remember anything past confronting you about Josh and then you screaming at me to uh, call 911. And that's what I told them. Where's our lawyers? I've been here all night. Can we ask for them? Yeah. I want to get out of here. I want to, I want to poop. I want to eat. I'm hungry. Okay, I'm sorry. Look, uh, they said that you thought that we were... Did you stab on. Mark or no? I don't think, like, I wouldn't do that. Why would I attack someone? Hey, when I... Why did you hesitate when I asked you to I call I don't know, one? because I was in... Sh I guess in shock. I mean, all, I, all I remember is you, you yelling at me to, like, call someone. I want my lawyer, dude. I can't stay okay. here. I'm hungry as sh I need to eat. Okay, okay. To Mark. I did not stab him. I don't think I did either. I really don't think I did. Like, I don't think I did anything. Fine, dude. Just go out there and tell him that I want my lawyer and I want to get the f*** out of here. Okay, I just... Is it, is it out of the question to even ask if you're okay? We're, we're fine right now. I just need to go out of here dude Please, what you? happened i what? don't know i don't know i don't know i'm freaking out okay i don't know i don't think so i don't know what happened strangely rahul gupta stays calm and composed during their interaction however he expresses no sadness at all his childhood friend just died and his response is he's tired hungry and wants to go home to take a shower although gupta denies killing mark Taylor, on the other side, doesn't quite deny it. As the meeting between them concludes, Taylor tells the detective another strange statement. You know, if I did it, I don't, I don't want him to get hurt in this process. After five hours at the police headquarters, Gould finds herself released. Meanwhile, Gupta is soon charged with the murder of Mark Waugh. At the outset, it's hard to trust either of them. However, the scales tip in favor of him being the one behind the murder, with mounting evidence against him compared to her. The prosecutors also believe it's very unlikely they did this together. Is there any chance that Rahul and Taylor did this together? No, I don't believe knowingly that they did this together. A year and a half later, Rahul Gupta steps into the courtroom facing the charges. The cameras aren't allowed. After the trial, Gupta's sister, Shireen, is asked whether she thinks her brother is guilty. Did your brother Rahul Gupta kill Mark Waugh? No, he did not. And you're certain of that? I'm 100% certain of that. Although Gupta allegedly admitted to the murder, he changed his story once he sobered up. As the trial begins, his lawyers make some daring claims. They pledge that Gupta will testify, and they vow to prove that he's innocent. Instead, they assert that Taylor Gould is the true culprit. 
Gould isn't facing trial, but she's about to take the stand as a witness. Gupta's lawyers will examine her with questions of their own. The defense argues that Gupta got blood on him while he was giving CPR to Mark Waugh. They also claim Gould had plenty of blood on her, enough to be guilty. That includes spots on her dress and bra. Gupta's lawyers want the jury to pay attention to the blonde hairs found on the knife and in Waugh's hand. What are the chances that there's going to be hair on the knife, hair in the hands, hair on the wall, and she says she has no involvement in this case? They claim there's a big suspicion around her because her hair was on the murder weapon and in the victim's hands, and the fact she changed twice before the first responders came to the scene. As Gould steps in front of the jury, she isn't of much help either. Facing them, she simply claims she can't recall anything from that night. She says it's because she drank herself into a blackout. However, as she takes the stand in front of the judge, she denies killing Mark. She insists she couldn't have done it. However, when it comes time for Gupta to take the stand, the intensity rises. People were just hanging on this guy's words, and it's a cliche, but you could have heard a pin drop. Gupta stands before the court, his demeanor collected. He narrates the events. As I came home, I argued with Gould, accusing her of flirting with Josh White at the bar. He also presents something he hadn't disclosed to the authorities before. He says he tripped and hit his head moments before Mark was killed. As the trial goes on, prosecutor Patrick Mays steps up to challenge Gupta about how someone could get murdered in such a small space without him noticing anything. Furthermore, he presents another crucial piece of evidence against him. And then he hits him with these texts about Taylor complaining about their sex life. And he's saying, well, you were willing to spend the rest of your life in prison for this young lady that is complaining to you about your performance in bed? The defense quickly finds similar messages hinting that Although they had recent arguments, they clearly cared for each other. And we gave them back very similar texts that indicated they had a very loving relationship. Following this, the jury is presented with another recording. This recording could be the one that decides the case. After spending almost 15 hours in custody, Rahul Gupta reached for the phone. As he called his father, he started recounting the incident. Free call from Rahul Gupta. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. What happened? Where are you? I'm in jail. What happened? Mark and I got into a fight, and he tried to get a knife, and then I got a knife. Who? 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 Who did you get into a fight with? Mark. It seems like Gupta confessed to holding the knife. At least that's what the lawyers think. But now it's time for the jury to decide on its own. He's still traumatized by what happened. It doesn't make any rational sense. It doesn't unless he's telling his father the truth. And he might be telling his father the truth if it weren't for the fact that all of the scientific evidence points in the opposite direction. As the jury deliberates, the tension in the courtroom is at its highest. If Rahul Gupta isn't found guilty of Mark Waugh's murder, it could mean justice evades everyone, especially since the state has already cleared Taylor Gould of any involvement. In a dramatic turn of events, the jury reaches a decision in less than a day. They find him guilty. After the verdict, Waugh's family can't hold back tears. Our son Mark, all I can say is a gift from God. His murder was a sin, not just on his family, but on the community as a whole. On the other side, Gupta's lawyers think the judge should have let the jury watch the video of Gupta talking to Taylor at the police station. This is important stuff that goes right to the issue of guilt or innocence. Although Shireen Gupta isn't satisfied with the final verdict, she feels grateful that she still has a brother. At the end of the day, I'm grateful that I have my brother. You know, he's still somebody I can go and talk to, I can visit, I can write to him. While I can talk to my brother, you know, they can't talk to Mark. At last, Mark's father gives the final statement. His death is a tragedy that we must carry for the rest of our lives. 